you, Jamila, for the introduction. I really do appreciate it. Thank you all for being here for this afternoon session. I am very happy to be here, and I hope you are enjoying the convention so far. Um, I was, again, very honored to be asked to speak this afternoon, and my talk is going to be on something very practical. Um, it is geared towards those of us who work tirelessly in this community. Now, for those of you who don't know, in addition to being the president of Black Nonbelievers as well as the founder, I am a full-time employee and I am an event services manager at a conference center. Um, I've been in hospitality for over 13 years now. And it is crucial to the success of our business to make sure that people are happy and that events and meetings go off without a hitch and that they are a success. So in being involved with this community and communicating with a lot of people, I thought it would be a good idea to present about what we can learn from the hospitality industry, especially as it pertains to increasing the diversity of this community. So I'm not sure if it's on the screen yet. Okay, awesome. I don't see it though. <laughs> well, by you, I mean you. Yes, but I have a I have a PowerPoint that I like to show. <laughs> okay. Here we go. Okay, this was supposed to be up already. Question for you, how many of you currently or have ever worked in hospitality? So that's a good number. So you know what it, you know what it is to interact and deal with people and different types of people, correct? So yeah, that can be fun and to interesting and challenging to say the least. <laughs> so, and we are dealing with a number of different personalities in this community. And so just practical means, I, I'd like to discuss just some practical means of what we can do in order to help each other. Okay, awesome. Okay, so let's define hospitality. It's kindness, friendly, welcoming, and professional treatment, which is applicable to anyone. So that means that no one should be above being kind and friendly, no one. No matter what your economic status is, um, what, no matter what your place is or what you're doing in, in your profession or in your life. Everyone has the ability to provide some sort of hospitality. It's customer service and communication and people oriented. You have to find out what people want and you, they give you feedback and you, it's up to you to provide it. And there's a diverse range of people employed in this, in this, uh, in this field. And there are, there are many career opportunities as a result. And it is an actions and solutions based field. I can say for my particular, for my particular job, uh, I have to communicate with a staff. I do have a staff that I manage. I also have to deal with, I also have to communicate with meeting planners on our, on, in my staff or in my, um, on my team as well as the, the other side, the client. And while it is important that we service the client, it's always important for us to make sure that we're communicating as a team. And so that hospitality does not stop with the people you service, it also extends to the people you manage and who you work with. The hospitality industry consists of hotels and convention centers, much like what we're, exactly what we're utilizing right now. Uh, transportation, airlines, car rentals, cruise lines, entertainment, nightlife, and restaurants. 
So this is an industry that millions of people utilize every day. And some of us work in it every day. And so there are some statistics here. Hospitality is one of the world's fastest growing industries and will add one new job every 2.5 seconds. Figures from the World Travel and Tourism Center have the industry growing at a rate of 23%, faster than that of the global economy. And the hospitality industry is the nation's number one employer after the government, which, which equals 8.1% of all jobs. So that means that there are a lot of people not only being serviced by it, you have a lot of people who work in it. And a lot of faces that you see are people of color, people who may not have um, an elitist or, or top economic background. And so just thinking about being serviced by this community, but you may overlook the people who serve it. And so in what we discuss in our communities and how we can improve our relations with other, with other atheists, secularists, we can look to this industry in a very practical way. So the number one um, mission of the hospitality industry, take care of the customer. Whether we want to, whether we realize this or not, we are in a service, we, we offer a service capacity. We are serving many who may not be out as believers. We are servicing people, we are serving people who are looking for community. And we are also looking for people to support what we do as far as donors and also in participants and organizers. And so that is the golden rule to make sure that we are, and it's, it's up to all of us to make sure that we are taking care of each other. So we're all customers in this in some way. Number two, uh, next thing, advertising and, and branding. I know many of us wish that we had millions of dollars to advertise our organizations, but we work with what we have. Some have been just like with the African Americans for Humanism campaign, we've been able to do billboards for that as well as for this convention right here in Memphis. So that is an effective way, but if you don't have thousands of dollars for billboards or radio ads or TV ads or what have you, then you use the means that you have, which means newspapers. Um, there may be other interviews that you can participate in to advertise your groups. But it is important that we do advertise. I know many in this community don't like to feel like they're proselytizing to others, but in order to increase our numbers and our members, it is important for us to advertise. Planning and strategizing. Um, there are many people who think that events magically happen. You come to them, you may, you may attend a convention maybe once or twice, a few times a year. I know in my industry, we service at least 100 meetings and events a week. So this is something that we do all the time. And many don't know what goes on behind the scenes, what it takes to put these things together. And so it's good for you to know and to be on the inside of what organizers and planners and the leaders do. It's, it's always good to, to know and to have some sort of inside information. And if you can, if you, if you can do it, that's great. We always need more help. And if you can't, at least have a better understanding of what needs to be done before you just automatically criticize something for what is or isn't being done right. It's only fair. Presentation counts. Now these are just some random pictures that I put up, but it's important. It's how you deliver the message, how you present yourself when you are speaking, how you present yourself as an organization. It counts, it is important in, in, um, in the delivery. And sometimes, you know, so, uh, hey, it's, it's, there, there's a night, you can always be, you can be nice about telling someone that their religion sucks. You can, but, you know, it, it, and it's okay to do that. Presentation is, is important for us. Show a friendly face and be nice. 
<laughs> if you ever see us at the Black Non-Believers table, for example, you will always see me being welcoming. Hi, how are you? You should never be afraid to talk to any of us, or even as a believer. You know, what do we, what do we hear a lot from this community? Oh, I didn't realize that you were so nice for, for quite a few of us. Well, what did, what did you expect? But it's important, too, that when we put ourselves out there, it is okay to, that's what helps dispel these misconceptions about us. And there are times, again, where, you know, that, that's not always possible. But if it is in your nature, if, if, it is, if it is something that you want to work on to be welcoming to more non-believers and, to, again, increase our numbers, as well as in communicating with believers— you can have that friendly face and be nice. You certainly don't want to walk into any restaurant where everybody is just glaring at you. That makes you not want to eat there. If you go to a hotel and no one is nice to you, they certainly want your money, but they're not treating you like you're important. Certainly, you do not want to stay there. So it is important for us to look at how we are communicating with each other and with, with others out there to make sure that, yeah, it's okay to, to be friendly. And anticipate needs, be proactive, become actively involved in operations, solicit and obtain feedback. If there is something that can be done better, you listen and perhaps implement and also get the people involved. That is what helps people feel valued. Follow up. Uh, there's, a, there's always a conversation about what can we do to be more inclusive. Don't just make it a one-time conversation. Make, make, make it multiple conversations, which eventually should lead to more action. Show genuine concern. This can be a problem with some of us, and it's understandable because like, like me, many of you go back and we have our everyday lives. Many of us work full-time jobs. We have families. We have other responsibilities, and that is completely understandable to where we cannot always get things done in the timely manner that we want them to. But to be genuinely concerned about the issues that are important to us and to be willing to work on them is very important. That shows, that shows the person that you're communicating with or the people that you're communicating with that you actually do care. But even hospitality has its limits. As much as I would like to be nice to everyone that, that I encounter, it is realistic, it is unrealistic, and it's not always possible. There are times when we are going to have to, we, we, we have to say no. We will have to put our foot down, and it's okay. We don't have to feel bad about that. So it's okay to offer options if there are, if your group, if you have a group that doesn't necessarily, uh, it, that someone that, that excuse me, if, the, if your group doesn't offer what someone is looking for, uh, it's okay to refer them to another group, or it's, it's, it's okay to say, well, I may not have this, but here is someone else who does. Don't ever just let it be no and that's it, because then you drive people away. And don't be afraid to revamp and eliminate. Any good business or organization looks at what they can do better, what needs may need to be eliminated, what needs, but what may need to be changed. And it's okay to have that, um, it's okay to look at that. It, is, so it, is, it isn't good for any organization to just continue to do the same things over and over again, and they aren't working. Revamp, manage, and even eliminate if necessary. Um, in conclusion, I'm going to say this. Um, there's a quote here. It is a mistake to think that we only listen with our ears. It's much more important to listen with the mind, the eyes, the body, and the heart. Unless you truly want to understand the other person, you'll never be able to listen. And I'm going to just interject a bit about the disparities between certain communities. 
Even as we sit in this lovely historic southern city, in this lovely historic southern building or facility, I am reminded of a specific aspect of history here that more than likely this, this building and others like it had an NBA policy and we're not talking about basketball. Can anybody tell me what that NBA policy would be? No blacks allowed, except to serve. And so this is a reminder for all of us the history of where we have come from, how far we have come, but also how far we still need to go. But looking to this, I, I carry, I like to, I don't dismiss the obstacles that people have overcome. And part of the community that I come from, you know, it, they have had to serve. They've had to serve people who may have, who very much look down upon them who did not look at them as human beings, but they still continue to do it with a smile on their face. And it isn't, that, that doesn't mean they were Uncle Tom, or they did what they had to do to survive. And it takes, it is, it, it takes a skill to be able to smile and be friendly and be nice, even in the face of pain. And I don't think that's something that any of us should ever forget. Thank you. So when we look to trying to change the faces of this community, the visible faces of this community, and yes, there, are a, there is a lot of intellect in this room, there are a lot of brains in this room, which is very, very important. I'll tell you something about me. You can have the highest level of PhDs, you can have an alphabet soup behind your name, if you do not treat people with the basic level of respect, that means nothing to me. Nothing. But whatever you aspire to do in your own life, or in this community, or whatever you do, it is important that we implement these basic principles of communication, respect, love even. And we can do this as a community. It is not beyond our reach. It is not beyond our, our scope of understanding that in order to increase our diversity and our visibility, that we can absolutely improve on our hospitality. Thank you. I'm not sure how much time I have. Um, but there may be some time for questions, if you have any. Yes, no, maybe. Are there any questions? Yes, Greta. <laughs> Hello. Mm -hmm. Oh, uh, when you're talking about things that atheist communities can learn from the hospitality industry, uh, what can you say about the regrettable necessity of sometimes 86ing people? I'm sorry, say that one more time. The regrettable necessity of sometimes 86ing people, sometimes telling people you, we, we can't accommodate you because your behavior is not acceptable. Mm -hmm. um, again, like I said before, it is, we're not going to be able to accommodate everybody, but there is a tactful way that we can do that. You know, I'm sorry. We may not be, you know, this may not be for you. And you give it every, I know for me, I give every opportunity to be as tactful and as courteous to someone before I do have to begin that elimination process. It is, you, you don't just have to chuck them out, but also it is good. That is a part of the management. Sometimes it is unavoidable. So knowing that you did your best, knowing that you were as nice as you possibly were initially, if it comes to that point, you can be like, I'm sorry. You know, we, can, we, we just can no longer, and, and that's it. And you don't have to, it, and there are some people who may not respond to that well, but as long as you keep your decorum and you know you did your best, then, then that's what matters. Yes, sir. Person I do not recognize, I'm just kidding. <laughs> With the fact that in every organization, including the ones you lead, 
seems like 5% of the people do 95% of the work. And how do, you, how do you cope with the fact that you don't probably get the support you richly deserve? I try to keep my focus on those who are supportive. Sometimes it is very difficult, I cannot lie. I know for, I can empathize with other organizers because we share the same frustrations here. But the fact that we know that we're helping people, that we are reaching people, and that there are many in this community who do support what we do, that is what keeps me going. Yes. Oh, sorry. Yes, ma'am. So I think you made a really useful point earlier that there's no shame in making referrals and saying, you know, this is not the right group or organization for you. And I know, for example, at Grief Beyond Belief, we're frequently, you know, if someone approaches us but they're clearly religious or kind of into woo, we're often saying to them, no, this group isn't for you, but, you know, if you need some help finding the right group, what can we do to help you? But I'm wondering, how do we get the same respect from religious groups? How do we get them to refer to us if they're not able to serve secular people in need? Um, unfortunately, I'm not sure how long. It's a matter of when that will happen, but that will, that will take us remaining consistent with what we do and being open and out and, and invisible. I, invisible. Um, I wish I could say that there was something that we could just do to, you know, to, to, you know, to try to get them to refer, but I don't want to rely on that because there's no guarantee that they will ever help us. So I think it might be good for us not to even count on that at some point, even though it might be just one of these things where it's more self-sacrificing on our end. And again, it's, it's okay. There may come a point where that may be reciprocated, and I certainly hope it will. But until then, it will just continue, it'll take us to continue doing what we do and putting ourselves out there for us to help each other or even helping them. At, at some point, um, hopefully there will be more religious organizations that would be willing to refer others to Grief Beyond Belief or other secular organizations. It's hopefully just a matter of time. Thank you. All right.